and often nothing at all. I am here weekly because I did not have a full bre- full breakfast this morning um, with um, web developer and um, podcast host, Allison, uh, Allison Plus on the internet. I am also joined by um, web developer and podcast host, Chris, who is Jazz Sequence on the internet. I'm a web developer, podcast host, and Eric Gary on the internet. What do we have in common again? Yeah, I have no oh, idea. Just, no. <laughs> um, actually, I, I, I thought that introduction would be fantastic. It wasn't, but I thought it would be because of the last introduction I've been thinking about for a week now when um, Chris introduced us as um, valued customer. Still laughing about that <laughs> in a week. Doesn't take much. <laughs> Is there's, an interesting, there's an interesting conversation uh, in the inclusivity channel on my work Slack um, about the term developer versus the term engineer. Um, because, um, whoa, very loud AC. Uh, because um, typically, women and people that have less development experience are less likely to apply to a job that is titled engineer than developer because they feel like they don't qualify. Um, This is interesting because at Human Made, um, we sort of followed what TenUp did uh, because TenUp calls all their people engineers and there is some project that we bid on that uh, despite our comparative expertise in the field, um, the client went with TenUp because they felt like their team was more experienced. So we switched terms from developer to engineer for that reason, particularly because the types of clients we are trying to appeal to um, respond better to the term engineer than developer. Um, Man, that's, so that's, that's fascinating. Web developer I- or web engineer? I, I feel that I fall squarely in the developer bucket. See, so I don't, yeah, I take, think. Take what I, you want. I think most I, of us, at least hairs. at HumanAid, I think most of at HumanAid would be perfectly fine with a developer title, but it's not for us anyway. It's, it's, it's sort of like optics. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. So my, my title, you know, because we can set our title up in Slack, my title is um, backend developer slash obstacle. So I often feel as though, you know, we need to get this one. This one thing is ready to go, but we're still waiting on back end. So, obstacle as opposed to blocker. Blocker felt like it had a negative connotation. Obstacle is like a, it's a fun challenge. You know, like you go to an obstacle course and have fun. You don't go to a blocker course, right? So I thought obstacle would be a nice title. And I realized that the other day um, when I was chatting I with the client. I don't go to very many obstacle courses, so I don't really know why you would. <laughs> I, I picture like like an agility course like when people do it with like pets or with their dogs so there's like they jump hurdles they go through like the weird oh, like, <laughs> like like the Such ninja like the ninja training thing <laughs> you have to Let's weave go. between the poles really fast with your like, tail yeah. wagging and <laughs> run through that chute that's like a, a sleeve at the end and it pops up in the dog yeah wait I, I think i might have seen this video on youtube where the dude jumps through the circular shaped uh gymnastics hoop thing yeah like a flip <laughs> yeah right yeah i don't do that i don't do much of that gary so i don't, I don't know about trampolines being beats. fun it's like half parkour half coding half <laughs> <laughs> It's like you can console log this thing, but first jump through this hoop and land <laughs> on your feet. <laughs> Man. Yeah. The keyboard is over there and you yeah. need to you get need to, to complete the challenge after doing a backflip. Get to your keyboard, complete the, these exercises. I, I I've always considered myself a developer, but uh 
I can see the argument to each. Although I also understand some people's, uh, I guess, concerns about being called an engineer, but also because like sometimes, like I think there are certain regulations about who can call themselves engineers in certain industries anyway. Yeah, but, I feel like the term is is a little bit silly because like I don't, I don't, I don't ride a train. Um, I want to wear I do want to. a train cap. Yes. Um, we all show up with conductor hats and overalls next time. Like we know what we're talking about. And I haven't studied engineering. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the title of engineer is a little bit uh, non-applicable, but I also recognize it's an industry thing. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. The since you we were talking about web developers and technically I'm, I'm an, engineer but really only because that's what people other people call me mm -hmm. i, I can you, call myself whatever i want i guess as a freelancer i should really yes. should really flex my terminology a bit more <laughs> forget uh, every or engineer what can i call myself? web happiness enforcer um i at um i don't know why at my local wordpress meetup i still have the conversation when i was like why don't you work for yourself right so last uh, night someone asked me that reasons. and I, I mean, I just think my boss is an idiot when I do that. So <laughs> that is, he was a nice, nice gentleman. <laughs> yeah. Like I can't work with that dude. It's impossible to work with. He's an obstacle. That's what he is. <laughs> <laughs> can't get anything done with him. <laughs> yeah. Just feels like I'm jumping through hoops all day. The keyboard's over there. <laughs> <laughs> I do like, I, I like the allusion to like running through an obstacle course with you though, Gary. I feel like that's, it seems fun. It does, doesn't it? It seems like much, much more fun than, um, than, than just uh, hitting a wall. Being a blocker. Yeah. 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 A blocker, like, uh, <laughs> more it's a football term, maybe. American football term. So, um, we have a topic today. We do, we totally have a topic. Chris and I have no idea what the topic is. As per usual. And, and we may not know what the topic is once we hear the topic. So I might most not likely. Really know what the topic is. <laughs> I may or may not have done what a lot. on it. Allison is going to be frantically Googling during the, the episode. What do you think I've been doing this whole time? <laughs> She's like, she keep talking about blockers. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, keep talking about this other. No. I have I totally yeah. have a topic. I'm totally ready. The topic for this week is Snellen chart. What? Snellen chart. Snellen chart. Two words. Snellen. The second. The second. The second word is chart. <laughs> Snellen chart. This is clearly another German word. <laughs> I think Snellen is a name. Oh. Really? Yes. Yes, Jonathan like Snellen. In 1842, yeah. Jonathan Snellen uh, developed a particular kind of chart to help him with uh, grain dispensary, his grain dispensary. Uh, and this chart is commonly referred to now as a burn down chart. Um, I, do, I do have to correct Because Kanban. Because Jonathan Snellen was knighted, so it's probably Sir Jonathan. <laughs> Sir Jonathan Snellen. <laughs> I'm so amazed that you know this. No, I made that. <laughs> um, I, of all the charts that I'm aware of, none of them is a Snellen one. chart. Yeah, but, but wait, what? But what my favorite. It? Yeah. Yeah, list some of these other charts. I need to know this. Well, there's well, I mean, a burn down chart, obviously. Yeah. There's a, a Gans, pie. Gans there's with a two ends, right? Gan chart um flow chart um venn diagram I was, I was about to ask is a venn diagram considered a chart or not it chart it plots data I, so i would think that it counts chartish chart. yeah not be confused with char chartish which would enter the whole spinach versus kale debate again <laughs> oh no i was thinking how you would deal with pieces of the database Oh. <laughs> Actually, it didn't matter what you said. I was, I was thinking of the opposite. So. <laughs> <That's hard. laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a uh, Snellenbrook chart. What was it? Snelling? Snellen. Schelling? Snellen. Can you spell that? F Did you already spell it? No, I didn't. S-N-E-L-L-E-N. Okay. 
you're like, it's not going to help. So I'll happily <laughs> spell it. <laughs> I can spell it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sneller. Sir Jonathan Snellen, definitely. Well, if it's a person's name, we can't take any clues from there. Like, you can't take a person's last name and understand what industry they're in. My name is not Gary. Charting, engineer. obviously. Is Gary, the web developer. Um, charting is the industry. He's in the industry of charting. I wonder, uh, what, were, what are things you would chart? You would chart, for some reason, I think this is with boats. Boats? Like, why? like oh. why not boats? I feel like this is when you chart... Um, the um, the channel in ports where boats dock to load and offload goods. Value customers. <laughs> Sir Jonathan Snellen was a man of many talents, apparently. <laughs> well, I mean, he just sat on the edge of a rowboat with like a lead weight on a string. Yep, that's about six feet. Oh, that's <laughs> like thirty feet. That's much better. Here's the edge of the channel. So as you're as you're pulling in your tugboat, you pull out your Snellen chart. To verify that you're in the channel. To verify, am I in the water? <laughs> <laughs> Have I run aground? No, I'm still moving. <laughs> I'm still in the water. Actually, I think that would be just called a map, wouldn't it? <laughs> or look. <laughs> Did I tell you uh, that I mentioned on the show about the shipwreck we went to, we went to when we were up in Oregon uh, a couple months ago? No. Uh, there is a there's a shipwreck that is on the beach, a part of a shipwreck. Um, uh, from the Peter Iredale, which was an old, uh, an old sailboat, the last, one of the last sort of sailboats that still had sails that, uh, to do cargo shipping. And it was actually, um, it was actually going to, uh, be decommissioned. Um, it was like in the late 1800s. So it was like sort of on the cusp of when boats were still like wooden and had sails versus when boats had like metal sides and uh had engines um so this was still a sailboat when they and so it was it was you know very old i mean not very old it was like 40 50 years at the time that it it ran aground but anyway the reason why it ran aground uh was because they didn't have their snow and chart um, they were going up, they were trying to get into the Columbia River uh, to, really. to do a delivery, and, and the, their boss man said that he would give everybody on the ship a bonus if they could cut the time of their travel by a week. So, in an effort to do so... So they did not give the bonus. <laughs> in, in, in an effort to do so, they ran really close to the shore, and that particular part of the Oregon coast has a very, very long beach um so they ran aground because it was very shallow and yeah i was hoping yeah, you say so they not, tried they to cut the corner by blasting by towards the, the corner. Yeah. and trying to launch themselves over <laughs> into the river because they didn't have a, a sailboat snellen, because they didn't have a snellen chart to tell them how i wonder how useful that would be near a beach anyway because the depth is i mean tides obviously play so much into it and erosion and Erosion, or whatever the opposite is. Uh, the opposite Sam of, is built up. The opposite of erosion. Erosion would be erosion. Uh, <laughs> would be Sam <laughs> fixing itself to the wall of of the rock face, or whatever it would be like things putting themselves back together, which I don't think is a thing. Time travel. Got it. Um, piling things back up. Yeah. <laughs> well, but sometimes when there's storms, like the the, um, I feel like like you like the displaced sand has to end up somewhere, and it, it as it's washing out, it ends up like in weird situations, and yeah, piles up. Not called here's a sand sand the, sandspur. No, a sandbar. Sandspur. I probably shouldn't have gone to the sandbar before this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yes. It collecting and gathering and forming new things is, is a thing, but it is not, it's not related to erosion. erosion. It's, not, it's not the opposite of erosion. Erosion. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. What else would you chart then? This you conversation chart... was eroding, but now it's just eroding. <laughs> That's how, it's... how much erosion has occurred. <laughs> um, you would chart a lot of businessy things. So maybe it's a business chart, right? I used to chart all sorts of businessy stuff. 
Yes. And obviously it was a successful chart because Sir uh, Jonathan Snellen is a common household name and we use his chart every day. Back up a bit. Sir Jonathan Snellen is not actually the person, right? Oh, sure it is. What is his name? According to Chris, yes. <laughs> According to Chris, yes. <laughs> I, I like that we fabricated a person so effortless, like so <laughs> weave. <laughs> yes, weave. I like that we've <laughs> fabricated a person so realistically that you're now questioning whether this person actually exists. Wait, I mean, is this one of those like flukes of history where it was like really Martha Snellen that did the work, but he got the credit? <laughs> Look, that's that Probably. would be the kind of topic that I bring to the table usually. Yeah. <laughs> like Martha yeah. deserved the credit. Jonathan just swooped in. Well, the good news is we call it a Snellen chart, not a, not a Jonathan Snellen chart, right? So <laughs> I don't call all it, I don't call it anything. <laughs> <laughs> Snellen chart is not part of my <clears throat> vernacular. It is today. Have we considered um, that it is an acronym? Snellen? <laughs> That's a really long acronym. There's too many letters it, for me to come up with the, the thing that, that would be an acronym for. Oh, man. That's all I was pulling for was that you would, you, would, you would waddle around in that word for a while and try and make something out of it. That's a good point, though. Like, um, at, at what point... Is something just ridiculous to be an acronym? More it's than like five letters. Four. Actually, five letters is pretty ridiculous, but more than five. No, it's not. It's 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 pronunciability matters as much too. So, like, quantity of letters is okay if it's if it's easy to pronounce and everyone is aware of what the acronym is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, so, what are your favorite acronyms? What's the longest? Talk to calf. That's a good acronym. Yeah. Like you don't have to explain that. Like I know what that is. Then there's the South American one, which is Conembol, which is a little bit harder. Cause that's not as great. It's yeah. less pronounceable. Yeah, no, you're right. It's a the time, but it's easily. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, I feel like that's, that's where um, dot com bubble missed things. Like we had a bunch of made up words that should have been acronyms instead, you know? Like FIFA is a fun word to say, but it actually stands for something too. So it's like, it's, it's coming at you two levels, you know? Scuba is another one. Like, that's just awesome. Scuba is a fun word to say, but it actually is an acronym. But then there were things like, I'm trying to remember some of the weird dot com stuff. They all started with W's, didn't they? Uh, <laughs> but like made up, like. I, I used hypertext transfer protocol in the sentence the, this last week. That's amazing. <laughs> Did you use it? I, no, I feel like the only time you would, use, you would, you would say that as opposed to HTTP, I mean, say HTTP, but the time, well, the time you would say that is to point out that it is a transfer protocol, correct? Uh, I did it to make fun of the of a narrator um, because it was <laughs> it was a stuff okay. Well, I guess that's another reason to do it. <laughs> so we were listening to an audio book, um, and it had this stuffy English sound uh, English accented um, person who's doing like the intro and outro, and he's like, "You can visit our website at www dot blah 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 dot com." And I'm like, hypertext transfer protocol, World Wide Web. <laughs> so because what do you think about the abbreviation when like, people say? Stuffy English accent, like www.anything didn't sound right. So hypertext transfer protocol. Yeah. What do you, what do you, you think about um, when people abbreviate www as triple dub or tri dub or no. dub dub dub? No, no and no. What, dub, what are we no saving? No. What are we saving? Yeah. What, what, that, like, that extra syllable. Omit that entirely. The U, the dub, dub yeah, the d only U is what we're saving. Only so U is three times. Right but is the attempt to save something or add cool points? <laughs> I think it's actually to add cool I, points. I know nothing about the cool points. No, thing, I don't but, know but, a, but it's, it's, it's 2018. Like, do we need to prefix the domain? No. The three W's? No. Like, we know it's on the World Wide Web at this point. I know. We're all jazz clear on that. Dot us. We don't need <laughs> www. Just type in just just type in binaryjazz.us and you will see us us collectively. I worked on a site years ago that had both the .com and the www. The site was dub, identical. Dub. dub dub dub. But it was actually hosted on two physically different machines. One was a Linux server and one was um, uh, Windows NT 
like IIS, ISS? I, no, ISS is the space station. IIS is the IIS. thing that serves stuff from Windows. Yeah, so two physically different machines serving the exact same static HTML. Um, it, it, oh, I, I'm still flabbergasted as we sit here today. Why? How was that decision even made? What? Wait, so there is there is domain.com and there is www.domain.com and there are two different boxes. They were two physically different. Yeah, and actually, like, actually physical boxes. Like they weren't like on shared hosting or anything. They had their Linux server. They had their Windows server. They hosted the identical website on both. I mean, one I guess was you www. Could, I guess you could do one was not. Sort of, I guess you could do some sort of like cheap uh, A/B testing that way. Right, like you, you don't need to. Have, I, this was. I know, but I mean, you don't need to have a, a like a, a program or a software or a plugin or something in front of it to handle the like routing it to the site A versus site B. You just have like the people that hit www dot whatever and the people that hit whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm there's probably some interesting analytics that you could come up with. Like, I I was not first enough that time to ask com. like why www.domain.com but you could do that you don't need two separate machines to do that no but, like, it, especially but, it is, but two separate oh machines, man get, this is making me more frustrated now than it did at the time two separate machines uh at the time windows, i was just one being windows and one we, being linux means you could sort of uh can, performance in the hierarchy of engineer developer programmer coder maybe like i barely called myself a coder at that point like i was i was running a thing that I ran a Perl script that rendered HTML and I, I don't know, it, it worked, but I mean, it was like, it was like, here's a dynamic website, but you have to render it before someone needs it. So every iteration that someone could hit on the site, we rendered, pre-rendered the static HTML for, and that was, and then the second script was taking that and FTPing it to both locations. And that was where, and I found the issue with two physical servers. And yeah, that's dumb. It was dumb. I don't think I was charging a lot of money. I'm stuck on your hierarchy because like I would more likely consider myself a coder now than in the beginning. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk to this hierarchy. Maybe this is the Snellen chart. I feel like they're more like, I feel like in, instead of hierarchy, it's more like merit badges where it's like you just yeah. have a collection of, of things. Oh. Rather so than, like, yeah, I was, rather I was, than I was, like moving up a rank. I was yeah, a okay. web designer and then, yeah. I was, and then I was a coder. Were you ever a webmaster though? I was a webmaster. I that was, I actually had that title. Yeah. That term still makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I am the master of the web. I just this felt like Dungeons and Dragons, -y, right? Like I felt like I needed to like like can we get an update on this page? Like roll dice, like oh sorry. <laughs> like I like I don't I've never played Dungeons and Dragons, but this morning I have to admit I went to a coffee shop and there was a a flyer for like Dungeons and Dragons camp. And I was like, that's so cool. And then like right underneath, it's like for ages 10 to 14. Oh. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and I had this moment of, oh, cool. And then I was like, oh, it's not for me. And then I was just like, no. <laughs> <laughs> there should be, there should be Dungeons and Dragons camp. That's for all ages. Well, like I obviously can take initiative and go play somewhere, but I, I really liked the idea of like someone else setting up this. I think I, I was imagining like a literal camp. Like you go yeah. to like, you go camping yeah. in like Dungeons and Dragons in yeah. the forest or something. I was just like, okay. I was just like, it's summertime. Yeah. I'm, I can do this. Like that sounds, some nature, some dragons, some character development. <laughs> I can get on board. I don't know. Is it, have we reached the part of the show where you ask what a Snellen chart is? <laughs> You've been asking it since moment one, so it's true. <laughs> why set a an can arbitrary? I, can, I, can I officially? I was enjoying officially about being a webmaster. <laughs> oh, webmasters! I can like wax nostalgic about webmastering, <laughs> web rings. Oh yes. yeah! Oh wow! Yeah, I feel like there were things we solved back then that are still problematic and it makes no sense like image size is always a thing and like the minimum threshold for image size keeps getting bigger because our screens keep getting more pixely or less they have more pixels they're not they're they're more compact or they're higher resolution that's the word i'm looking for thank you but so it's like a higher resolution more pixely okay what's more the pixels word? more pixely pixel full they're they're more yeah right we just keep pouring more pixels into them, 
right? And somewhere there's a designer being like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like closing their laptop or like throwing their iPhones in it to listen to this episode. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I had a, a buddy last night who walked up and he's like, hey, can you help me figure out why this isn't working? And he opens his laptop and he shows me like the inspector and something wasn't displaying. Uh, oh no, he had a class, he had a style being added to this div that had a class. Um, he's like, why is this not working? I'm like, there's no way to tell. <laughs> he's, he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, we'll never know. Like, you're just gonna rename it. <laughs> he's like, really? I'm like, no, I'm sure someone here can figure it out, but it's not me. <laughs> I had the opposite. You have to shut your computer and throw it into the ocean because. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, you, you, this is it. You're done. You can't I do had, anymore. I had the opposite experience. Uh, I was over uh, at a friend of uh, my daughter's house picking her up, and her dad is a uh, video production guy. Uh, he makes short films and commercials and things. And he's out of this website that's like a million years old, and he's getting it redone. Uh, with a guy with WordPressy thing, and it's 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 one of those themes that like, hey, it's the video production theme, uh, and it has all this built-in stuff, and it makes you think that that's what WordPress is, and it's really not because it like overwrites all the backend stuff. It's awful. Anyway, he had this thing where like, uh, and he had, he was struggling with it until his his guy that was helping him with it figured it out uh, uh, how to do things. So all the things were done, except there's this one image that wasn't centered. And it was kind of bugging him, but it wasn't a big deal. I mean, he'll deal with it, but it's, it's, you know, it's a picture that should be centered and it's not. So I'm like, okay. And I look at it and I had the opposite experience to you, Gary. Like I knew the thing to do and I like did, you know, went into an inspector and I looked at the source and figure out what it was. And, and he's like, and he's looking at the source code on the screen. He's like, so when you're looking at this, this, this actually looks like English to you. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. And uh, then I went in and I added a class or I did a style to a class and I was done and it was like five minutes. And I'm like, oh my God, it's a miracle. Like it's, yeah. And it's centered. And it's That's centered, yes. <sighs> Display anytime block think, margin auto. Anytime I think I know what I'm doing and I'm like, oh, I can't center this thing. Never mind. Back to square one. <laughs> I, um, I, I spoke about WPCLI last night at the meetup, um, which meant I just opened my terminal and type the WP command. I'm like, what looks cool in here? <laughs> Just demo that. Um, and host the site, the local site I was working on, and then <laughs> stored it. And I mean, Maybe it was like the perfect demo for WPCLI. Like, oh, we broke everything. Explain what WPCLI is as oh, to our listeners. Who it are not is. Listeners. It's not a great acronym, though. No. WPCLI, WordPress we'll put command line interface. Yeah, you can't say it. Yeah. Well, no, no, Man but just interface. as far as like throwing around terms for our civilians. That's fair. Yes. Yes. Yeah, right. So WPCLI is a way to interact with your WordPress site um, from the command line. So black screen, green text, flashy green button, like a computer of, of your black screen has green text, but my black screen has white text. And has purple. Oh, we should. <laughs> so my prompt has. Um, countdown of the next launch from Kennedy Space Center. It has the current weather. It has a stock ticker. It has. Um, Why do you need those things in your prompt? Why do you Why need to do those things stop? every time you hit enter? I mean, I don't leave, don't read them all the time. It's just there. My if prompt, I want to know, then it's. My that? prompt has path, and if it's Git, then it's like what branch and. But you check out the branch. You know what branch you're in. Why do you need that there? Uh, sometimes I don't. <laughs> So, yeah, sometimes I'm lost in the forest. <laughs> that's that's fair. Because I I, uh, I have the very frequently I'm checked out on master and forget. I often type git status to find out what branch I'm on, even though the branch is right there. <laughs> I don't know. This has really turned into like how the sausage also, is made episode has. Also, 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 um, I usually have a a million different tabs open in my browser and that also applies to terminals. I often have at least five terminal window terminal tabs uh, because of, like different branches, yeah. different things. Um, so like, so I know where the hell I am. I have the branch in like the path and the branch. It's valuable because otherwise I wouldn't know where I was. I missed an opportunity. This is very much how the Dyson sphere is made. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can we edit that in post-production? No, <laughs> please. No. <laughs> Like, sure, next time there's post-production, I'll hit a pet. <laughs> um, we reached part of the show where we understand what the topic is. Please, please. 
Well, obviously, Sir Jonathan Snellen, 19, 1967. I thought it was 1842. Yes, that. Look, at, we're, we're at remaining time already, and we don't know what the topic is. This Great, is, this you're, is living your best, you're living your best binary jobs life. If I've done my job, <laughs> And you have. And I have. So, so explain what it is for, for the listeners that aren't. Yeah. For so, the listeners. <laughs> for the listen, I'm just going to do this for the benefit of the listeners. Value customers. <laughs> Gary and Chris can just tune out for now because I know they're fully aware. Um, sure. A Snellen chart is the eye chart that we see in our eye doctors with the big E. I feel duped. At the t- Why? I don't <laughs> so it's, know. It's used to measure uh, visual acuity. Um, they're named for <laughs> not Sir Jonathan Snellen. Sure. Um, Dr. Jonathan Snellen. Dr. Herman Snellen, Dutch ophthalmologist. Herman. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was developed in the 1860s. Uh, which was yeah pretty pretty on point and now there's like a an evolved version that's called a logmar chart that's like an improved version of his the one with the the e shape that's in different directions yeah so it's like the it's different letters um instead of the giant e i think it's like dsr or something um i um last time i had to read an eye chart i did with my glasses on and whatever and then they were like take your glasses off and do it like that's i need okay we're not gonna get very far you know so i did the first line and i'm like well i have the second line for memory the Mm -hmm. third line for memory probably the fourth line for memory but like legitimately like i need to look at these and determine what i have been able to read like this is harder now i should have done without the glasses first yeah yeah but yeah, anyway, I, I should, the doctors. Now you can wow if you next time you go in for an eye exam, you can really Oh, that's a Snellen chart. Yeah, you can really, a really high quality Snellen chart. Like really a looker. I think there was some um some data that was basically just like it's the most commonly purchased chart. It's like the most widely publicized chart or something <laughs> that people buy because they're everywhere. So I was like, that's an interesting. Huh. I, I feel like order this one is not quite as, as not quite as commonly usable as Petricor. I still I still I used Petricor in a sentence last week too. That's amazing. I'm gonna change my lock screen on my phone to a Snellen chart today. A Snellen chart, yeah. or a Logmar chart, depending on how updated. No, I I feel like in the in the interests of this show, I don't have an option. It has to be a Snellen. I'll have to go back. Yeah. Well, Herman Snellen, you know, just. And he looks exactly like a distant like, cousin of Sir Jonathan Stone. Yes, yes, yeah. He looks exactly as you would. Expect. Only distant when he's not wearing his glasses. When he's wearing his glasses, it's like they're right there. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't wear glasses in the photo of him, actually. Just kind of disappointing. Ooh, he had the uh, LASIK stuff done, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, for some they used to do it with a log back in the day. They'd hold a log of your head and just pound until. <laughs> can you see? It's very refined since then. <laughs> Oh. Named right, Doctor uh, German so, uh, LASIK, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at the at this point of the show, typically we uh, take uh, listener questions, uh, and if we don't have any listener questions, then Allison gives us questions. Uh, we do have listener questions. We also have pre-submitted Allison questions. Oh yeah. Um, well, thank goodness I was watching out for. So my- as webmaster, you get to decide what we what which one we do. It's it's true. I'm gonna go with the two listener submitted questions and and. Sure. Yeah, and because they're listeners submitted, so we have uh, we have another question from from what am I saying? Sure, uh, happy. We have another always. question from Lisa, mm-hmm. uh, and Lisa would like to know if do you have go babs go babs? Nope, I sure don't. <laughs> do you have go bags prepped for your family in case of an emergency requiring you to evacuate? Mm-hmm. Are you now going to lay in bed tonight? assessing risk and whether you need to do this <laughs> so, a so yeah no and no um i, really? I take that back so You're hurricane not season gonna freak out about it now no wait you don't have you don't have go bags but because you don't go anywhere you just have supplies yeah that, yeah just batting down the hatches that's not true so there there are times like um when the hurricane is coming like there's that that conversation like do we leave or not right um, and it's just always, like, where's the track showing it? And sometimes the track is like totally wrong um, by hundreds of miles. And you go, oh, no, we're going to stay put, we'll be fine. And then 
you know, it's crappy and you don't have power for a while. Or sometimes it's like when we're at you're like, oh, let's go. And you call hotels and the closest one that you can find is, you know, a five or six hour drive. Um, ordinarily, and you factor in all the traffic, like we won't get there before the storm hits anyway. So, um, no, I mean, but for hurricanes coming, we do probably pack earlier. It, yeah. it's, it's a decision. The problem is a decision time. It's like, you know, I, the thing, you don't want to feel stupid and leave town and like it totally misses and it's just beautiful sunny days and you're trapped in some hotel three states away because it's the closest one you could find a room in. It's, I mean, there I are know. worse ways to feel stupid. <laughs> yeah, better to be stupid and alive. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I do not have and I, I said it, and I probably won't uh, stay up tonight wondering about risk. Um, no, I do throw, we do throw like a change of clothes in a bag, like, that's a hurricane. <laughs> but but we I don't have one now. Like I will make one. Like if there's a hurricane that looks like it might be this way, change the clothes for everybody and the kids. Or the kids and everybody. Just everybody. Are we there have like a couple we have a couple crates that are like pre filled with all of our camping stuff. Like so when we go camping, we don't have to like pack all the camping stuff. We already have the thing, just take it, put it in the car. When I traveled for work, I always had to go back back. I don't have a go bag per se, but we do have like a survival trunk. I would, uh, I don't. Judges ruling that might qualify. That might qualify. Can, like, can you carry it by yourself? No. <laughs> okay, well, then I mean, no, it's not a go bag. <laughs> I mean, but I feel, I guess, but it's like, it's just a container for the things that we would need in the event of emergency. But I think it could easily be transferred into a bag that we would then go with. I mean, we've had extensive conversations about like zombie apocalypse. Um, my partner, I think, definitely has more awareness as far as how of we the possibility of a zombie apocalypse. Well, no, just like the idea. Well, someone has to bear that burden in their relationship, right? I mean, well, yeah, and do you know what the burden is? The burden is, is that I've apparently already been mourned for because I wouldn't cut it. It seems to be the consensus. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the event of the zombie apocalypse, that you sucks. wouldn't make it past, you yeah. make it past the first episode. I wouldn't. Yeah, I would. I just. I'd be the one that's like trying to protect protect canned goods, apparently, and be left behind. <laughs> Are I you, don't know. So you're you're an extra? Is that? Oh, totally. In this in this scenario, I don't like even, a red shirt. I don't like even. A, oh yeah, I don't. I'm perhaps not even. In a no, it is, I, I think that, I think that she'd be pre red shirt. Like she's she's one of the victims that the red shirts go and investigate. Yeah, they're like this thing already happened, and we have to go down and see. God, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, like, I guess you just have to call it like you see it in these scenarios. Right. I mean, I'm just I'm disappointed for you. Like that's yeah, that'd be a rough. I mean, I think like I'm a rough conversation. There yeah. aren't many there yeah. aren't many things in in Utah that would uh, necessitate a go bag. <clears throat> However. That doesn't stop plenty of Utahns from like being full on survival kit, uh, like I don't know, aficionados. Like there's there's tons of like survival stores, survival things is is a thing here, and I think it's because we have a sort of historical cultural identity of like being afraid of invasion, running away. Yeah, running away and being afraid of invasion and protecting sure. your stuff. So like the gun, the gun carry can like the gun carry laws and all that stuff is all about like they're going to come in and they're going to like take all your stuff. And so we need to be prepared to fight back. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, like when they shut down the power and the stores are all, then we've got our kit, but I don't. Yeah. And I think, I think that's where our kit kind of falls. It's more of a hunkered down kit with like lantern water filter, this weird like heat reflective blanket thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's progressively getting bigger as the paranoia in our household grows. So we'll see where, that's why it's in the trunk. <laughs> I mean, like I always jokingly say, if, if like all hell breaks loose and there's nowhere to get food, like we have a dog and a cat, so. <laughs> no, no. That's just like, I, like uh, you know. That's like Donner party for me. Yeah. yeah, and then we have prickly pears. You should the leave I, prickly the prickly pears. pears first. Yeah, they won't. I don't. I don't know how long they'll last. I don't know. Doesn't the distance.
Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.